small fraction of people still don't have power as precautionary shutdowns are expiring now and power companies are restarting their service. Welcome to Coin 6 News at 10 o'clock on Portland CW. I'm Wayne Haverly. Our Joelle Jones is following up with people impacted by those power outages and she talked to officials about just how effective they were in preventing new fires. She joins us live on this Sunday night from Corbett. Hi, Joelle. Hello, Wayne. Good evening to you. And yes, we are here in Corbett where we watched PGE crews carefully check and re-energize lines just a few hours ago. And while the power is back on here, as you mentioned earlier, more than a thousand customers are still in the dark. Some have been without power since early Friday. It was a little wild in here. We had things everywhere. We had like a standalone AC over there. We had, you know, just cords running everywhere. There was we had like strip lights up. We have um, Christmas lights along our ceilings that we were using. So it was like a lot darker and kind of more cozy in here. It was kind of chaotic. But Alexis Kruger says she's worked as a cashier at the Corbett Country Market for the last five years. Due to the public safety power shutoffs, Kruger says the store was without power from 5 a.m. Friday until about 11 today. As one of the only stores in town, she tells us it was difficult operating on a generator without electricity, but says she was happy they could be there for the community. We sold a lot of ice, um, a lot of people trying to, you know, save their freezers and fridges. Um, we sold a lot of uh, batteries and candles, flashlights, those kinds of things. We were able to be here for the community as much as we could. Areas like Corbett, Mount Hood and Scott Mills are some of the last to have power restored amid the public safety shutoffs this week. With heat and high winds heightening the threat of wildfires, Pacific Power de-energized lines for 12,000 customers Friday. PGE also shutting off power for 37,000 customers over the weekend. Between the two companies, roughly 50,000 homes and businesses were left in the dark. And while Pacific Power completed restoration efforts Saturday, they say the shutoffs were a crucial part of their wildfire mitigation plan. Having those extra tools in our toolkit with the meteorology and the operations and everything else, uh, it made for a pretty sophisticated, but then also um, a nimble approach to a public safety power shut off. Although the PGE outage map shows more than a thousand customers are still without power, PGE says they have more than 100 crews actively working to re-energize lines in all of those existing areas and as quickly as possible. It is an inconvenience to be very frustrating to be without power. This is an effort for public safety and to just make sure that we are protecting our customers, you know, their property and making sure everyone is as safe as possible. For residents like Kruger who have seen the risks, she tells us she would take a power outage over a wildfire any day. My mom's coworker over in Washington, actually a power line went down and burned her shed down in her backyard. So it's a very prevalent threat and it's very real. Fires are powerful, it's scary. So I'm, I would take a 10 more weekends like this for no fires, for sure. With some PGE customers still without power, they tell us they will have their community resource centers, at least some of them open from 7 a.m. tomorrow until 7 p.m. or at least until power is fully restored. We have more details on restoration efforts listed at coin.com. Live in Corbett tonight, I'm Joelle Jones, Coin 6 News.